Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Gaskins here. Let me see if I can get this thing going here. Caramel kisses. Um, okay, so I see they let you stay a moderator when I made you a moderator last time. Um, hey, that sister there, she really be helping me out. Now, it's just the members who can write, just the members of the Blessed Tribe. I think for the non-members, the link is in the description if you ever decide to be. Let me jump right into the Q&A because the fight on tonight on one of my apps that I got on my phone, fight coming on at 10, so I don't know if I'm a, how long I'm be able to stay tonight. The Divine Lena. Hey, Tony, he wants me to stop nitpicking about certain things I don't agree with in the relationship and he doesn't consider it a big deal but it could be something major in the relationship listen to me you got to express yourself and this is what you have to realize is that if it is like a, a precursor to a deal breaker then you have to address it a lot of times men will call it nitpicking but if you know that this little thing unaddressed can turn into a big thing then you have to address it the good book say the small fox spoil the vine the good book says a little bit of leaven leaven if the whole lump so you have to address it and you can't really worry about it and it's always painful to hear and the reason why it's painful is because nobody wants to be wrong nobody wants to be wrong everybody wants to be right so what what my dad always tell me, God is a love. Thank you for joining the blessed tribe. He always say, in a time of peace, prepare for war. And so what that means is when it's cool and calm, that's when you got to have these conversations versus waiting until it blow up and everything hits the fan and then trying to address it. Because at that point, things could really get out of hand. So you can't really worry about a man or a woman telling you stop nitpicking if you know this situation can really turn into a bad situation now if y'all have questions y'all go ahead and put the questions in here um all y'all y'all be saying hey for 10 minutes now y'all go ahead and put your question hey tony hey now hold now hold your question now the final one hold on hold on you getting ready to post a question wait let me answer this question then post the next ones Hey, Tony, I know you're not a fan of online dating. What are your feelings on speed dating? Um, Pretty much the same thing. It's, it's about the same thing. Like, a man barely have enough confidence to approach you when you slow dating, when you when you walking slow. Now, you're going to put a time limit on it and expect to have a real connection. Ain't no, ain't no real man going in there. That's, that's old... What y'all like to use? Now, that's a narcissist. That's probably what you're going to have on a speed date because it takes a whole lot of, you know, umption, gumption, confidence, a whole lot to, to do some speed dating. So I, I what I would do is just do some slow walking. Do you some slow walking and that'll turn into dating versus paying to go be a part of a speed dating event. Oh, okay, my son fighting in the Silver Gloves tournament tonight. Okay, that's amazing. It's a fight on the app on um down there in Miami that I see. It is YouTube was not. What y'all gonna do one day? They call me if my YouTube mess around and grow, and they call me to be in one of them fights. Uh, it's YouTube was fighting each other on this here app. So I I kind of want to see it because they be looking terrible. What would the best way to address? lack of connection on the phone when face to face is face to face connection is good on the phone when you have a lack of connection you got to stop talking on the phone and you got to start facetiming so facetime instead of phone conversation because today veronica god bless you today in our world i struggle even on coaching sessions sometimes if i'm on headphones I might be on the phone, you know, looking at something or read something. And when I was struggling building as a coach, 
I remember client be telling me all their story and they finish talking and I'm like and don't remember a word because of social media came around. So today when you talking on the phone with somebody, you got to get on FaceTime if you really trying to build a relationship. Now let me see. Monica. Hey Tony, what's the balance between communicating enough and creating boundaries when just beginning to get to know someone? That's a good question. So what that means is you have to communicate until the point that you um, start to fringe upon neglecting your duties. So what this means is talk in your free time. Don't miss homework. Don't be at work on the phone when you're supposed to be working and you could get rolled up. Don't neglect your children if you got children. Don't stay up later than your bedtime on the phone. But if you got two hours of free time from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., talk on the, you could talk on the phone. But if your bedtime is 10 p.m., okay, hey, it's been great talking to you. I got to get off this phone because I got to be up tomorrow. Oh, what you mean? You got to get off the phone? Why you going to do me like that? Hey, I want to talk to you. Well, yeah, that sounds good for you. You at work. You working the, the night shift. I got to get up in the morning. Oh, come on. You going to do me like that? I want to hear your voice. Okay, well, just take a little quick recording of me saying recording, and I'm getting ready to hang up this phone. So you got about five more seconds to record what you need to record on my voice so you can listen to it. All right. Good talking to you. We'll talk tomorrow. And see, that's one thing women don't do, but that's that's a test from a man to see how much he can get from you and out of you. And the more you let him infringe on your time and what you got going on and you neglecting your kids, your job, your sleep or whatever, the more he knows he can get from you. Hey, when the new members sign up, y'all welcome the new members of the Blessed Tribe. Only the members get the right questions in here. And I do that, I got to try to keep some type of balance because it'll be too many coming at me. Crystal, I have a question. My boyfriend broke up with me. He told me he need time to figure out some things. So I gave him a week and, and two days, called him, and he said I allowed too much time to go by. Um, first, uh, caramel kisses. No, that's your standard. You ain't gotta have a man with kids if you don't want, if you don't, if you don't have kids or don't want a man with kids. Chris, let me tell you this: the man lied to you. Okay. So f first, what he said, he need time to figure some things out. That means he don't like you. That means that he does not see you as the one. He's not ready, and you gotta go on about your business. And the next thing is when he said you what you let too much time go by, that's just another excuse to get out. Another excuse for him to say he don't want you. So don't even entertain him. And this one I'm to everybody listening to this, especially every woman listening to this, stop letting these men lie to y'all. Stop letting these men lie to y'all. Tell y'all these lies by oh he going through something. Oh, he need to figure this out, figure that out. Oh, he love you, but he not ready for a relationship. Oh, all this, all that. These men be lying. You hear me? If a man sees you as his wife, he ain't going nowhere. He ain't taking no breaks. He ain't doing none of that. Y'all hold on right quick. Let me get Mia more. She jumped in here. Because when, when the people do these right here, super chat, God bless you, they'll, they'll disappear on me. Mr. Gaskins, I found a condom in my boyfriend's bedroom. When I asked him, he said he had with another woman when we broke up. Your opinion. Well, I mean, that's for you to know. you Because it's a lot of details left out of there. So is it y'all was broke up for a week? You came back after a week? and Or, or y'all was broke up some months ago? So see, that's what you got to figure out right there, but... If it ain't yours and it ain't come out of out of it, y'all didn't use it, then you already know what that mean. You already know what that mean. Listen to me. One thing I could tell is uh, a woman's intuition 
in dating has never been wrong. It ain't never been wrong about me. But one thing we could do as men, we could tell a quick lie and we could flip that, do that Jedi mind trick on you and flip it on you, make you feel crazy and you'll believe it. But when your intuition tells you something, unless you on drugs and, and all this and you going through stuff mentally, emotionally, your intuition is not lying. I hate to say it. I hate to admit it. It ain't lying. You know, um, now y'all hold on on these questions now. Let me see. You said 36 months of dating is the max to give a man. Does this timetable also apply for couples of 40 years old? Yeah, it don't mean you rush just because you older, you know. Um, it's still old fools, you know, so just cause you older don't mean, oh, we need to get married in six months or 12 months. It just come with dating, you know, but when I say 36 is the max, what I mean by that is I'm really making a concession for those of you who are a little weaker, you know, because really what I want to say is by 12 months, a man should be proposing to you by the 12 month mark and y'all should be married by the 24 month mark. The reason why I make some concessions is just because I see how people live their life. And I see people dating for five years, seven years, uh, 10 years, 15 years. So that's why I say 36 months, just trying to give a little extra room. But a man knows, a man knows inside of 12 months if you're his wife. And if he's mature and he's ready, it really don't even take 36 months. I just say that for those of y'all who's not gonna listen anyway. So. It give you a little bit more time. Now, let me see. Cheyenne, thank you so much. Thank you for the blessing. Now, y'all, hold on. Now, Caramel Kisses gave him a cash app. I, you know, I really want to thank everybody. Uh, when Caramel Kisses sent my cash app, I don't know how she got it. Maybe she asked me. But I thank everybody. I mean, people send me. A lady sent me $50. A lady sent me $50. I don't want to say your name. I don't want to put your business all out there. In case some, in case one of your family members watching this and they asked you to borrow some money and you told them you ain't have it. A lady sent me $50 on cash out. That thing right there blessed me. You hear me? And I just, I, I, I really appreciate that. Now some people, and some people send me a dollar. I, that don't matter. You know, that means something. That means something to me. You know, I, I, I know people uh, look at it a certain way but hey i appreciate it because what it says to me it doesn't say tony you need this money it say tony you know thank you and that's how i read it so i, I thank y'all how do you support an incarcerated individual emotionally send them a paperback bible that's what you got to do send them a paperback bible that's all the emotional support you're not jesus you're not god so you can't support somebody emotionally because that's on, that's on that person. So you can't be trying to keep his commissary full, trying to send nasty pictures, trying to run up your phone bill, $5 for them collect calls every day, all day, 15 minutes for $5, you know, all of that. You, you That's not keeping nobody emotional. And I'm gonna tell you, when they be in there, you know, I look at it like this. Look, you did the crime. You need to do the time. And you back there for a reason. So sit back there and let God talk to you. Let God reach you. Okay? You need to be reading your Bible. You need to be praying. And let God reach you. Let God reach you. So don't don't try to be God. You know, let, let them sit in there and think. Let them feel it. They be all right. They find them something to smoke. They find them. They get in a gambling game, card game. They get they they get in the stuff in there. They don't they don't need no emotional support. They need Jesus. I've been mooching for long enough. Time to join the blessed tribe. Couldn't join while dating, but now my boyfriend know I listen to you. I can comment. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your 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 gift right there. God bless you. Now I tell y'all the truth. Now and I tell y'all the truth. I. Still ain't went to get that iPhone 11. My wife got it. That thing looked so good. But I, but so I'm planning to do it. I just got to take the time to get on up there. So this could maybe get a little clearer 
on here. And I get some more battery life. I got the X or the 10, whichever you call it. And that's why I'm going to have to go tonight because my battery going to die on me. This thing be dying. Uh, Rafaela, hey, thank you. God bless you. Let me see where you at now. And we got new members. My boyfriend has been ignoring me. Should I reach out or let him come to me when he's ready? I don't want to seem desperate. You asking the wrong question, Rafaela, because if your boyfriend ignoring you, you need to be putting your track shoes on and doing a sprint in the other direction. You can't let a man ignore you and then pop up in your life when he ready. That mean you a handmaid. That mean you a concubine. That mean you a jump off. If he want to ignore you, then let him get to know himself and you go get to know you so then you could then get to know somebody else. You hear me? Don't ever let a man put you on ice and have you holding on waiting. Ebony J, thank you so much. God bless you. Because when a man, a man run in and out of your life because you standing still. And if you let a man just have you sitting there waiting and, and he can come back when he wants to come back and you still sitting there, that's desperate. That's desperate. You'd be better off reaching out and trying to have a closure conversation Versus just sitting there waiting till he come back because he he come back and you still sitting there. I remember a long time ago. I heard a man say he said, "Listen, he said if I knock you down uh, this Wednesday, if I knock you down this Wednesday, that's shame on me. But if I come back next Wednesday and you still down, that's shame on you. So that's shame on him. He left you in the first place." If he come back and you still sitting there like, oh, yeah, I'm just here. I'm waiting on you. You you the, you God's gift to women. And I'm just a piece of trash, just fortunate and lucky to have you in my life. So I'm just sitting here waiting on you to come back and give me some attention. That's how he going to treat you like a piece of trash, because he said, look, you don't even know who you are. You don't even know your worth. I could just walk out on you and you just sit there and I come back and you still sitting there. Guess what? He going to do you like that for the rest of your life. When he come back, the locks need to be changed. Your hairstyle need to be changed. You need to have some new outfits. You need to have a new pair of shoes. And do them like the Wale song. New phone. Who this? Yeah, you, you, you can have the same number and the same phone. And when he writes you, respond to him. Sorry, I got a new phone. Who is this? Just, just so he could feel it. What do guys think about a woman who goes to bars, sporting events alone? Does it look desperate? Now, nah, bar? Now, nah, bar, you look a little desperate in a bar. Now, if you talking about Buffalo Wild Wings, that... Is not a bar and that don't look desperate. But if you go to a bar, like what you see in the movies, yeah, you look desperate. You look desperate. So don't go to a bar. Go to, okay, like a restaurant bar, like Buffalo Wild Wings. Okay, that's not a bar then. A bar, the little small thing, the little hole in the wall, and you walk in there, or the or even the big ones, but they sell beer and it say bar. But if you go into a restaurant, even Buffalo Wild Wings, Chili's, stuff like that, what's she say, Miller's, yeah, that, that stuff right there, that's, you know, that's different. That's a restaurant. And sporting events, you don't look desperate. You look secure. You look secure. You look sound. You look strong. Hey, instead of me trying to scroll way up, when y'all hear me stop talking, then post your question, just like right here where I'm on uh, Cedricia. Cedricia, okay. Cedricia, your daddy named Cedric. And if your daddy named Cedric, I, I, if his name not Cedric, he got a beautiful name. If his name Cedric, you can tell him he play too much. Um, buddy, man, shoulder do y'all like that, won't we? We'll have you Georgina, Frankisha. Hey, brother, you done videos on how you fell in love with your wife. Could 
one day you and your wife do a live and she talk about how she fell in love with you. Yeah, I asked her to come on here tonight, but she said, man, you should have told me earlier. I ain't did my hair. I need to put on some makeup. But um, but yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do live. My wife, she just she has no desire to be a speaker. She has no desire to be a teacher. She has no desire to do any of that. So she she loved being a wife and a mother. She don't want to be in no limelight. So I don't try to force her because a lot I notice a lot of guys do it. I'm Cedric. I find your question. A lot of guys do it because. A woman will help you make more money. So you'll see a lot of couples do stuff together. Me, even me and my wife, we weren't even planning to write a book together. The publisher asked us to do that. That's a publisher idea. And I'll tell you something about this. Is the reason why we are the way we are is because it's real love. I hate to knock people that do it the other way around. But when you always got your relationship front street out there and you showing it off and you monetizing love when you monetize love you come under heavy attack from the enemy from the adversary and you never know when you're going to be weak and when you're going to meet your match and you setting yourself up for failure when you showing everything telling everything for the entertainment and the pleasure of the people when those same people will be bad mouthing you if you fall under attack and you slip up or something go wrong in your marriage, them same people who was asking to know all your business will also be cheering in your downfall. So one thing about me and my wife, we don't force any interaction. We don't do nothing for the ground. You, we take a picture when we go on a date night, but we're not trying to do a photo shoot every day. We're not trying to come on here and do all these talks. We keep it real natural, real organic. I don't even want to be on here, but it's my calling. So I have to be here. So I, that's why I don't force her to come on and force her to, you know, show face and, and, and talk and all that to try to make it look real, to try to make it look like something, you know, more than what it is because that's not her calling and not her thing. So y'all going to see her, you know, when she get ready, when she feel it's time. It's probably going to be closer towards our book because then it's kind of like, you know, it makes sense. She helped me write a book, and so she's going to want to share a little bit. But another thing about my wife, too, is she's just, she just real. You know, she real. She raw. She don't know how to play up to no camera. You know, she just going to call it like she said, and some of the stuff she say might be too real for a lot of women. A lot of women might look at it and be like, oh, okay, mm, step on my toes, because she carry herself the complete opposite of, of 99%. Of women that I see in the world today that's so heavily influenced by the social media so you know she gonna be it, it, it's gonna be a little something to where you gonna you might feel a little weight if you still you know drinking too much or cursing or smoking or if anybody if y'all in the nasty movies if you okay with your man going to the club to the strip club you're going to feel a way about my wife because she ain't into none of that. She's straight and narrow. I mean, she's straight and narrow. She about business. I don't, she don't give me no excuses, no concessions. It's no like, oh, you can go do this, go do that. So really, when you hear my wife talk and how she run things and how she, how she live her life, you're going to feel if you out there and, and you desperate for a man or you giving a man too much, it's going to step on your toes at first, you know, so I want y'all to understand that when the queen come from behind the curtain, you know, I've been talking to her about it. I'm like, baby, come on now. When we get out here, now you got to learn how to word stuff because she just, you know, she ain't used to this and I know how people will get. Hey, Tony, I really have a desire to generate a healthy amount for myself and two boys. It seems like I keep staying at a lower level and not winning i have a great work ethic what is your advice um i tell you this sometimes you gotta you know invest in yourself in the sense of get coaching you know get coaching one thing that i'm doing right now i, I wasn't expecting to do this but there's been a lot of people hiring me to um do business consulting 
and I'm helping them with their website. I'm helping them identify their gifts. I'm helping them build their brand. I'm helping with, with their book, with their courses and all of those things. Uh, Renee Shepherd, God bless you. God bless you. And so you have to take a little piece of your income, even if it's just 10 percent. And just invest that into yourself, you know. So on TonyGastonsAcademy.com, I have um, Entrepreneurship with Purpose course, um, the Birth Your Book course. A lot, of, a lot of courses out there, everything that I do, I turn it into a course to try to help others. Because I know when I was getting started, there were no courses. There were nobody telling the, the business, telling the secrets on how to, you know, tap into your gifts and use your gifts to earn extra income so i i do that um let me see uh gabriella hey god bless you he make a video on how to remain guarded um i don't know if that's what i would call it and it's not about being guarded it's really and I know in some one video I made a, I did a uh, thing about, you know, how you come in and you might have your guards up and then you go to peeking and then they go to coming down and coming down and coming down. But um, it's not about being guarded. It's more so about having the knowledge. Tanya Jordan, God bless you. I really appreciate you. Having the knowledge you need so that you can have confidence so that you can see the red flags when they arise so that you can see them and you can recognize it so that way you don't have to be guarded in the sense of bitter and broken and and just you know shine away pushing men away you just got to be enlightened to the point to where you can read the man and you can see the red flags and that is really your guarded that's really your protection is the new knowledge Hi, Tony. I divorced my wife and I am willing to put the work in to get our marriage back. I made the biggest mistake of our lives and want us to heal. Thoughts. Um, Timothy, you know, I would recommend you sign up for coaching. Now, everybody, y'all can visit mymentor.life. Mymentor.life. It's a bunch of coaches on there. You can go on there. You can select marriage, divorce, coaches. You'll see them come up. And yesterday, some coaches missed their session, but y'all bear with them and just reschedule. Don't write in, oh, get my refund, because it's a new email going to them, and it may not, you know, it may go to their spam. But you need to do ten coaching, Timothy. And I specifically say now, my rate is higher than most coaches, and it's because of, you know, how long I've been doing it. So I, I go up over time. And so what I would challenge you on, Timothy, is if you do the work to get your wife back, are you telling me that you will never hurt her again? That you will that you know for a fact you can love her until death does you part without making the same mistakes, the biggest mistakes of your lives again. And that's one issue with men is a lot of times we want to get our woman back because our heart is hurting. We call it our heart, but really it's our ego. And we're afraid to start over. We're afraid to build with somebody new and we want to get her back. But yet we have not done the work to truly learn the root cause of why we did what we did in the first place. You, you spent zero dollars on coaching. You know, we spent zero dollars on counseling or therapy and we just want to you know, cater to the woman sending flowers and begging and pleading and ooh, ooh, baby, ooh, ooh, but didn't do the work. So what'll happen is you'll mess around and trick her back into a relationship and then end up, which is what you got to realize. You could be strong on your own for the first two years, but what about year five? What about five years from now? What about 10 years from now? What tools would you have put in and would you have added to your life to renew your mind and change your, your life from the inside out and the worst thing you can do is try to convince a woman to come back and convince a woman to come back and then you hurt her again that's the worst thing you could do you messing up your life you messing up her life and you have to keep going 
how we have one kid, both 28. He wants to cohabitate, not me, no marriage, no engagement, already communicated my wants, no action, only talk, need advice, Tony, been together since 17. Latina, I had to turn the comments off on one of my old videos um, not long ago. It was an old video from my podcast. It wasn't a video. And I had to turn the comments off because the Holy Rollers in there. You know, the Holy Rollers in there. Oh. Timothy, she don't need coaching. You need coaching. You do the coaching. You do the coaching, okay? You do your coaching. And you pay for four to 12 sessions for you. Then you pay for her coaching. Four to 12 sessions for her. Then... If it's recommended by the coach, y'all come together. You made the mistake now. You broke the marriage, so you need the help. She probably already know how to love. and But she also need coaching because she need to be able to vent and talk about what she feeling and what she going through. And uh, Timothy popped up on me and that threw me off my question. That's why well, these questions be popping up. And what the lady said, what I was just talking about. Oh, the one kid. Okay, let me focus. Y'all don't post no question right now. Hold on. Let me focus on Latina question. Your name Latina? That, that's like a Latino, ain't it? Latina, okay. That's okay. That kind of, I ain't never met nobody in Latina now. Now, let me help you understand something. This is the thing. And this, and, and let me help y'all Christians understand something, how I have to answer these questions. If a person in fornication, obviously their conviction for Christ is not that strong. So me throwing Christianese at somebody who is not convicted by Christ or the word of God is a waste of my breath and a waste of all our time. So understand this. I speak to people where they are versus just throwing all my beliefs on them. And some Bible thumpers can't understand that. You can't just be talking Christianese to people who don't speak that. So let me tell you what you went, what you did wrong, Latina. And this is what everybody here got to understand is you got to understand. Now, oh my toss, we just said, hold the questions. Okay. And now here you go. And you already asked a question. Okay. <laughs> Now, y'all, let me talk to Latina now. So, this is what you got to understand. When you lied down, you took and you told him that you want to put the cart before the horse. You told him that you wanted to trap him with a baby, okay? That you want to go there instead of doing it the proper way. So it's hard to put the cart before the horse and then say, okay, let's get on our journey. Let's do this the right way. Let's go in the right direction. So now you try to undo everything you done taught him. And, and he's like, hold on. Now you just can't flip the script. Now you was cool with this fornication. You were cool with all this not too long ago. Now that we done reproduce, now you want to flip the script and start calling other shots. And so now he's like, hold on, you can't, can't do that. And so that's where you're going to run into some issues. So what you have to realize is if you have had a change of heart and you've outgrown him and y'all are not married, then you have to be willing to come to the point to walk away. You got to be willing to walk away. Now, the good book advises that if you were both non-believers and you got married and then you become a believer not to leave because you could be the one who leads him to God. But if you were not a believer and he's not a believer, meaning y'all ain't living it and y'all don't have a conviction about doing it God's way, then y'all was on the same page. Y'all were equally yoked. And so now you, you flipping the script because you on here learning and growing and he's staying still. So what you have to do is you will have to pull back and then let him catch up. 
let when you pull back, meaning you go stay somewhere else or you stay where you at and you kind of cut off communication. The only communication is about, you know, y'all love one that you brought into the world. Then he like, whoa, hold on. What's going on? Like you ain't where you where you were. I ain't got you how I want you. I ain't got you how I had you. What I, what do I need to do? Then you like, listen, I done told you. Like, that's a deal breaker for me. We we both made mistakes. I made a mistake. I've grown. I've changed. You're going to have to get with the program or I got to get gone because I refuse to continue living like this. I did that in my ignorance. I did that, you know, and I'm not doing it anymore. So you're going to have to make that change like that. And if he's not willing to change and grow, he's telling you. He's telling you that you're not the one. So let me see. I'm going to try to scroll up to another question. Or y'all can. Okay. Oh, my Todd. She didn't came in here with her. Another question. This is I'm going to get my Monty's worth on this blessed tribe. How do you differentiate a soul tie from a soul mate? I think he may be the one, but he has a lot of things personal growing to do. A, a soul tie is just an emotional connection with somebody, which is a spiritual connection. A soul tie could be with somebody that you despise. It could be with somebody you don't even like. A soul tie could be with anybody you've lied down with. And everybody you've lied down with, you have a soul tie. Even if it doesn't actively affect you today, you have a soul tie with every person you've ever got in the bed with. You also can have a soul tie, meaning an emotional connection to someone that you did not get in the bed with. And so understand that. Now, see, a soulmate, a soulmate is not found. A soulmate is created. So what this means is a soulmate is a person that you get with and the two of you make love to one another's mind. You learn each other. You serve each other. You give and you receive, meaning you're giving and the other is reciprocating and you connect on a spiritual level, emotional level. Now that is a soulmate. So you can have a soul tie with any and everybody. But a soulmate is a person that you give your all to and they give their all to you. You don't have a soulmate on the first date. That's not a soulmate. Y'all might be connected in the universe based on how the stars align when you was born, all of that stuff that, that y'all believe in. All of that might feel good. But a soulmate, that takes time. That takes work. That takes building. That takes really having a, a real connection. So let me see the next question. Or oh, somebody got a question ready. Oh, my Taj and put her question in here again. You know, copy and pasting over there. Could you, die? Could you do a video on guys in jail? Somebody asked me about somebody in jail. I'm, and I'll tell y'all like this, and I hate to be this way, but as a man, I do not recommend dating a man in jail unless y'all was already together and then he goes to jail. I don't recommend y'all dating somebody that's in jail. Now, if he was already your man, when you go in jail, then you might need to, that might be your time to separate. If you know he ain't the man you need, that, that might be destiny giving you your opportunity to move on with life. But other than that, you can't believe nothing a man say in jail. And when you in there with, talking to the walls and somebody trying to get in your walls and you worrying about commissary and you just trying to get enough money in the thing to get you a hamburger out that machine and to get you some noodles, you're going to tell... A woman anything she want to hear to send you a little piece of change every month to have you on a regular schedule to get you some money you telling everything and a lot of men go to jail and get you know fake save in there they know all the scriptures and then come out and act like treat you like casper the ghost get out and come and touch you a few times and then right on to the next and you done sat there and waited faithfully you done sent thousands of dollars over the period of time. You done did all of this. And then man come out and, and he don't know. He don't a bit more know you than the woman on the moon. And so I'm trying to tell you like this right here. 
unless that was your man before he went in there and he was in love with you and you were in love with them with him and he treated you like a queen and he went in there for defending you or one of y'all you know cheering unless he went in there for something like that then hasta la vista that uh, this destiny is telling us it's time because you want to be in the streets you want to be in all this criminal activity i'm gonna let you have that and i'm finna go on here and i hate to say that because i got a lot of brothers locked down but it just is what it is i got to tell the truth and shame the devil how do you stop thinking about it x it's been a few years since we've been together but i still think about him from time to time i'm copying and pasting too um you're not gonna stop thinking about them until you replace enough of those brain patterns and you know brain cells with new knowledge so what's gonna happen is the most the more you learn the more you understand about the relationship that you had so then you're gonna be able to take that relationship and you're gonna be able to label it and you're gonna be able to say okay that was lust okay that was that was control that was manipulation that was deception that was financial abuse that was emotional abuse that was this and that and you can label it and now you have an understanding of it and so now you can move forward with your life but if you sit in a place of not understanding because you're not getting new knowledge you're not watching the videos reading the books going to the seminars then you'll sit and continue and the way the brain works is it it starts to self-soothe and it starts to heal the wounds meaning it starts to remember things better than it actually was and you will start to remember all of the good times and be reminiscing and you'll forget the reason why you why it fell apart you'll forget why it didn't even work you'll forget all the pain because you'll be focused on the good thing that happened so i want y'all to think about that share thank you for posting the book now y'all do me a favor now the new book is called a woman's influence make sure you pre-order it and remember it'll authorize your card but it won't charge your card right now it'll fall off in a couple days and then it'll reauthorize it the day before the book releases so understand that guy recently divorced has custody of two sons recently got really busy looking for a new house and in school he was really interested in the beginning but seems preoccupied is it too soon or wasting my time uh going about your life going about your life when i tell y'all barack got time for michelle going about your life when I tell you I got 11 companies and over 50 streams of income and I still spend time with my wife every day, when a man wants you, he'll move the moon, the sun, and the stars to get to you. When he too busy for you, you got to be too busy for him and go on about your life. What is the best way to keep a cordial relationship with a guy who you have to work with but you aren't interested in and you don't want to be rude only professional um you can't worry you can't worry about people feelings you can't worry about uh, especially a grown man and that you ain't did nothing wrong to just hey and bye you know just hey just hey and bye anything he cross over that you gonna just stop him right in his tracks uh, uh mm, mm, I'm, mm, mm. just hit him with that just hit him with that you spoke on men's character I have good men interested in me, but they're not men of godly character. Am I wrong to overlook good men because I want a man of godly character? Um, no, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. And to be honest with you, I don't believe in a good man without God. You know, I don't believe in character without God, you know, and people call God different stuff. Me. I read the Holy Bible and I know it's other books out there that people read, but me personally, me being a man, I know the nature of a man. And if a man has not surrendered to God, I can't trust him. You a woman. I'm a man. So I, I could, you know, put the hands on him. You hear me? I could hit him with a one, two, left, right, uppercut, everything. And I don't deal with men who don't know God. I don't do business with them. I don't, I, I'm not, you know, I talk to them now and I try to, you know, be a light for them, but 
I ain't doing business with them. I'm not hanging out, going out here and there and all of that because if you ain't surrendered to God, I can't trust you. I can't trust you because man just ain't good enough on his own. We we just, we, we, we foul creatures. We born in the sin. I got over my ex by watching all 200 something of Tony's videos on YouTube. His course is no lie. Now, Tamara, you ain't on here lying. Now, you watched all that many videos? God bless you. God bless you. Hey, it worked though. I told you now. It worked. Listen, we have to be willing to let go. Majority of the time, we wait for the man to do so. When we know that we know that we know, leave it. It only get, now, Wendelin just hit y'all with a word now. Now, don't, 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 don't nobody else try to go to start preaching now. But amen to what Wendelin said. She telling the truth. Oh, Lord, my finger dragging. How do deadbeat dads have friends and girlfriends? Because he's deadbeat. That's how. Because he's deadbeat. I, I'm, I, I, be honest with you, I don't fully understand that kind of man. I couldn't bring a child in the world and be a deadbeat. I just, I, I don't fully understand it. Tips for women dating in their 40s. If you're in your 40s as a woman, that means that you, you're older and you're wiser. You're not 20 no more. So you can learn at a faster rate, faster clip. Things ought to sink in deeper. It ought to stick longer. And so you ought to be more astute, more on top of your game, more able to read through things, more able to recognize red flags. So you date the same way. And this, here's the thing. Eyes open and legs closed. Point blank period. Eyes open, legs closed. Get out the house. Create you a routine to get out the house. So you need to get out the house. You need to be... Have you somewhere to go work, Starbucks, Barnes & Noble? You need to be a part of a meetup.com group. You need to be a part of the life groups at church. You need to have your daily routine. You need to have a gym routine. You need to have your Starbucks routine where you sit in there for two hours a week working on your dream and your goals on your laptop or your iPad. And you need to be out the house. You need to be moving and shaking, getting and going, and you're going to start bumping into people. Now, here's the thing. That's called positioning. So you need you could be positioned, but you also need to be prepared. What I mean by that is brain, brand, body, the three B's that I talk about in my book, Mrs. Right. You need to have your mind sharp, doing what you're doing right now, getting new knowledge. You need to have your brand on point, meaning create something that you cannot be fired from, even if it's just a blog. People making a living from, from a blog. And in your body, you need to have you three times a week that you're in the gym, but you need to work out 30 minutes a day. And you need to be eating right, and you need to be working out. And if you're doing that, guess what? Stuff going to work on out. It's going to work out when you step out the house. You literally could walk from your front door to your mailbox and meet your husband if you didn't focus on them three Bs. I pretty much watched them all. I have to check to make sure, but he has helped me not be naive and to self-reflect raise my standards. Hey, God bless you for watching the videos. I really appreciate you. Carmen Savage, thank you. Thank you so much for your gift. What about dating a man who had a record and multiple kids, yet connection is insane? You see in his actions, he will do anything and already calls you his wife. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. You need to get to Nike.com right now. And get you the most expensive pair of track shoes that they make. Get them overnighted on Prime. And put them on tomorrow. And you need to take off running as fast as you can run. And don't stop. Don't stretch. Don't do nothing. You hear me? What you just described to me. Listen to me now. You hear me? I'm a man. You just described the scariest man in the world. You hear me? And record, multiple kids already calling you his wife and will do anything. Remember now what that anything means. So do anything, meaning if he mad, he'll do anything. Right now he glad, okay? Connection is insane, okay? 
You ain't accidentally used that word insane. I know about that connection. You know why that connection is so good? Because he good at wooing and fooling women. He got the juice, the sauce, the oil. You hear what I'm telling you? He knows what he doing. And let me tell you what this man will do. This man will have you on your bike. He will throw your bike out of place. You hear me? You will be hypnotized, demotized, magnetized, all the ties. You hear me? And he will ride you till your ties fall off. You will empty your bank account for that man. You will disown your children for that man. You will cut off your family for that man. And that man will use you high and dry. He didn't get a record for being good, okay? He got a record for breaking crimes. He break crimes and he break laws. He break hearts, I meant to say. He break laws and he break hearts. You hear me? You better run tonight. Play with it if you want to. And you're going to be in somebody's insane asylum. And you're going to end up going broke doing coaching sessions every single day with me. Because listen here. $250 an hour is not no little bit of money. But I done coach a lot of women in your place. And they have to do session after session after session after session. But guess what? If I'm on that phone with you, away from my wife and mine, hey, we got to swipe the card. And guess what? It's going to be costly. You deal with that man right there. Listen to what I'm telling you. I ain't never been wrong about this here now. Listen, that man right there, you got to run. Can you do a video on discovering purpose? Also, were you and your wife walking in purpose when y'all met? No, we were not walking in purpose. We were on the way to purpose. We didn't even know what purpose was. My wife was 19, I was 21. So we didn't really understand, fully understand purpose. And on discovering your purpose, um, I'll do a video on that sometime. But building the brand, it tell you to talk about what people come to you for. So I'm considering one day I may have to start another channel to talk about, you know, purpose and purpose entrepreneurship and business and things in the purpose realm because. As you see, 99% of my questions are relationship questions, so I don't, I don't be wanting to venture too far in other arenas talking about stuff that only you want to hear about. Now, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session, but I, I know there's a few other people that'll want to hear about that. So when I run out of topics, I might you know, throw that in there. But I will tell you this real quick. Purpose is rooted in service. So what that means is you got to identify your pain identify your pain because that's typically where you want to serve at your pain your mistakes your past so wherever you've been hurt there's somebody who's being hurt where you have been hurt and you can serve there if that's a soup kitchen if that's working with a nonprofit, if that's starting a nonprofit, if that's serving in somebody else's nonprofit, you know that's purpose like what uh, caramel kiss is doing she's serving because she's working helping me helping other people that's purpose purpose is always rooted in service baby daddy doesn't want to be with me anymore hated fam said my sister touched him also claimed to talk to my ex-best friend now who he said he never knew also found the download craigslist email two years ago said was hacked sis you got to run you got to run sis drop your phone just drop your phone sis don't even pay your next phone bill you need to run you hear me run block his number don't answer another text don't answer another call Raise yours by yourself. If you got to get WIC, if you got to get food stamps, if you got to do a GoFundMe, don't send it to me, but send it to your friends and family. If you got to do a GoFundMe, you hear me? Move on with your life. Listen to me. You found a download credit list email. He told me he got hacked. Man, them people hacking ain't checking for him. He in there trying to look for some sausage patty. You hear me? You better run. You better run. Because if you play with it, 
you're gonna come up with that heels. And it's a lot of that is not that is not to play with. It's a lot of people that have been uh unfortunate to be dealing with somebody and you 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 can't play with it. You can't play with it. And when a man tell you he don't want you, okay, thank you. What you need to tell a man or a woman, if it's a man listening, somebody tell you they don't want you, okay, thank you. Thank you. That's all you need to say. You ain't got to tell me twice. Get going. You said get going. Don't don't wait. Don't sniff. Don't blink. Just leave. Trust me when I tell you. Cause when somebody tell you they don't want you, and you stay, they about to make you pay. They about to make you pay. Listen to what I'm telling you. Hey, thank you, Rhonda. I really appreciate your support. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow I had to step away. Not sure if my question was answered. Is it? Is a man turned off by a woman who is straightforward and blunt? Not aggressive, though. No, not at all. Not turned off at all. Actually, a man will really, really appreciate that. And that's what more women need to be is straightforward and blunt without cursing, without yelling, without being derogatory, demeaning, condescending, but just being real. Because you see how I talk? I ain't pulling no punches. I ain't cutting no corners. I'm coming right at you. That's how men are. That's how we get talked to by our fathers, by our uncle, by our brother, by our coaches, by our school teachers. So men is used to straight talk. There's so many women coming and saying, well, well, how do I tell a man this? Uh, you tell him. You just sit down and tell him. There ain't no special way. You ain't got the no four-page letter. You just sit down and tell him what the IS is. And that's what he's going to respect. But so many women beating around the bush, tiptoeing, walking on eggshells. A man can't respect that. You got to realize when you're dealing with a man, you're dealing with a different type of human. Okay? So you got to come right at it. You, you, can't, you can't play with it. Hey, Tony, you're the best. I Thank you very much. I've been with a man five years, four kids. He does everything a husband would do. Bought me a house, pays bills, great with the kids, but won't commit. Am I wasting my time? That's a tough one. And my heart goes out to you. And see, this is stuff I get put on right here. And I have to deal with that there. And, you know, it sounds like he might be from a different culture or, or a certain belief system. But, and so you got to look at what you want. Now, and here's the thing, but and this not even for you, really, it's really for everybody else who's not in that situation yet. Listen, this is what I keep telling y'all. Come to the table like a boss. You got to come to the table like a boss. You got to come to the table with what you want. You got to have your terms. So the hard part about this is you five years and four kids in. It's hard to flip the script on a man and say, oh, now let's get married. He's like, hold on. We five years, four kids in. I done bought you a house. I'm paying all these bills. We married. Like, what that piece of paper going to do for us? That's how he thinking. So you got to realize, okay, well, what is that piece of paper going to do for me? Like, do you have a spiritual conviction? Like, did you get saved and now you want to live righteous? If that's the case, okay, I get it. But what you have to also realize, and this is what I want everybody to realize, is that there is a consequence for your choice. You have freedom of choices, but you don't have freedom of consequence. So when you choose to put the cart before the horse, there's going to be some consequences. So what that means is when you choose to lie down with a man and do married folks things, and you are not married, you're going to be faced with a decision to make. And that is to settle for what you chose to get into or to stick by your standards and to move on with your life. Listen, I'm telling y'all. So for everybody who's not in that situation, come up with your stipulations, your standards now. Okay, got a little drama. Okay, Crystal, you coming in here telling Timothy business. Come on now, Crystal. You could have sent me an email. 
I knew Timothy was on. I, I meant to ask Timothy, Timothy, is the woman you trying to get back watching this live and you know she watching this live, so you trying to come interrupt her space and her piece of growth? Now, let me, and I was, I need to leave. I'm supposed to be getting off here in three seconds, but now I got to get Christelle some time. Is your name Christelle or Crystal? 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 Okay, Crystal. Tony, I'm the ex to Timothy. And I tried to make it work. Got the pastors involved. He still didn't want to try. One week before the divorce, he wanted to try. I signed the papers. How do I know he is sincere? He ain't sincere. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Tim ain't sincere. I felt like Timothy in here playing games. I felt like Timothy wasn't on here for himself. Timothy on here because he know you on here. Now, Timothy, that's what I'm trying to tell you. This woman tried to give you all the time in the world. This woman tried to make it work. She didn't got the pastors involved. And see, this is the problem with men right now. This is the last thing I'm addressing. I got to go. And listen to me. Now, I got to go. And... Timothy, I tried to tell you, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Fellas, listen to me. Y'all got to stop playing this game. Stop pushing a woman to the edge. Stop pushing her to the edge, and then you want to do too little too late when you had every chance in the world to do right. But see, this what it is, is we want a woman to change for us. We want a woman to stoop to our level and let her be who we want the woman to be who we are we want the woman to come and do what we want her to do you see what i'm saying and then you can't do that you can't let the woman come and try to do all of this trying to get it right and then you ignoring it and you pushing her pushing her pushing her then when it's too little too late now you want to take and you want to, oh, I got to make it right. I got to make it work. Oh, I want to get a bite. When you had all of that time. Come on, bro. You can't play with people heart like that. Because if you push a woman to her, her breaking point, you don't deserve a woman. You don't deserve a woman. My wife had to tell me one time when I was 23 years old, Tony, you got to get out them streets. I said, no, I ain't getting out no streets. I said, no, I ain't getting out no streets. I'm standing in the streets. Guess what? My woman came home. She had her hair in a ponytail. Her face was red. She had her glasses on. She was holding her Bible. I said, oh, Lord, I know what this means. When your nose and turned red and your glasses on and you wear contacts and you got your hair in a ponytail and you wear your hair down, you've been in warfare. You've been in prayer. I'm through for. She left that night. And when she left, guess what? It took me three days to change my life. You hear me? She ain't never had to tell me again. She didn't have to tell me again. I said, I'm not going to play with this woman. I was 23 years old. Now, here come your ex coming here and say, listen, Tony, I done went to the pastors on this man. I done did all of this. I tried to get a chance out of the chance. And then a week before the divorce, he want to say he want me back. Man, you playing a vicious game. You playing a vicious game, man, and you got to grow up. You got to work on you, bro. You got to work on you. You got to, and, and guess what? You got to deal with your consequences. So become a better man for the next woman. Become a better man for the next woman and treat her like a queen. And, and Crystal done made her choice. She say, I'm finna be done. I got, to, I got to go. You know, so guess what? Crystal say she got to go. So let her go. Let her go. She might regret it one day if you become a, a, a great man. But guess what? She live with her choice. And she'll become a great woman, and y'all ain't meant for each other. But if you got to be married and you got to go through divorce to learn what you had, you don't deserve what you had. You don't deserve what you had. That's why I always say, listen, you know good and well what you were doing because you're a grown man with plenty of sense. You know good and well what you were doing, man. So listen here. If you got to make a woman divorce you for you to realize what you had, you, you know what you had and you took it for granted, and now you don't deserve it. Not somebody else deserve her. Not a man who going to see her value and respect her and appreciate her deserve her. That's what you got to realize, man. And that's why I do the work that I do. Because I was that man. I was that man. But listen to me. What I'm trying to tell you is that you're going to go through hell and high water. That it's going to be a lot of pain out there for you when you taking God's daughter. 
When you taking God's daughter and you treating her like your footstool, you treating her like a floor mat, you taking her for granted. And yes, she ain't perfect. Yes, she ain't perfect. Yes, she probably did some stuff. Yes, she probably, you know, had her little faults and all that too. But obviously she was a good woman if you want her back after she had to divorce you. And when she tried to get you some help, and this is what I try to tell y'all later. This is what I try to tell y'all. I try to help y'all understand it. So listen to me when I tell y'all. Now I'm probably going to miss my fight tonight, man. I'm going to fight on the app. The YouTube was fighting, and I'm going to miss my fight. Listen, later, listen to what I'm trying to tell y'all. This is what I try to help y'all understand. When you go on ESPN and you look at the poker tournament, what you see? A man, a table full of men. You see a table full of men. You hear me? You know why you see a table full of men? Because ain't nobody got a better poker face than a man. Ain't nobody got a better poker face. So this is what I try to tell y'all. When you say this is who I am and this is what I want to do and this is how I'm going to live my life. I'm saving myself till marriage. I'm this, that, and the third. When you say all of this, that man say, okay, boom. I'm finna test you. I'm finna try you. And I'm finna see. I'm finna see what you bought. And that man will take you all the way down to the wire. He will take you all the way down to the wire. You hear me? Just to see if you bought that life. Just to see if you bought what you say you bought. You hear me? And if and, and here's the thing. Most women get scared. Most women get scared. And they say, oh my goodness, he's going to leave. Oh my goodness, I'm going to lose him. Oh my goodness, I'm, he's going to leave. I'm going to lose him. Oh my goodness, what is going to happen? And so then, boom, you take and you compromise. You compromise your self-worth, you compromise your self-respect, and then he uh, got you. When if you just would have stood your ground, you were about to break his back and he was going to have to grow and he was going to have to change. But, so just like Crystal, Crystal went all the way through with that thing and she signed them papers. She signed them papers on them. She said, man, you done played me like a fool. You trying me like a baser. You got me messed up. Here go the, he put that signature on that paper, hit Man, get gone, man. I ain't got no time for this. And that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Because cause I'm trying to tell you, I tried to call my wife bluff. And you know why I tried to call my wife bluff? Because we had just got married. Our son had just came into the world two months ago. She had just quit her job. So now I'm the only income. You just got married. You're going to got married as a, as a sophomore or a junior in college. You from Jamaica. So your parents did not come from Jamaica to America for you to be on your bike in college, get pregnant, and then having a child and getting married before you get your college degree. This is what I'm thinking. So I'm like, oh, I got you. I got you. You ain't got nobody to turn to but me. So I thought that I'm thinking I had a trap. And guess what she showed me? Got something for you. I'm out of here. No job. Newborn. Two year, two month old marriage. I'm gone. I say, what? What she taught me was, what she taught me is it don't matter how deep you take me. You will not drown me because I taught myself how to swim. She taught me that although... I'm off my job for our son, that we just got married, that we living together, that my friends done turn they back on me, my parents done turn they back on me. Although that may seem like it's the case, I'm finna show you something. And when she left, I say, wow, my God. I say, boy, I got to get right. And so I changed, I changed my life just like that. So that's what you ladies got to understand. When you standing your ground and you doing what you know right, the man know. The man know that you doing right. But he's not ready to change, so he want to break you down so that you do what he wants you to do. And and the reason why I tell the truth like it IS is, I don't pick sides. You come on, you watch my videos any given day and twice on Sunday, anybody could get it. Sometimes I'm coming at the woman by what she need to be doing. And sometimes I'm coming at the man by what he need to be doing. I'm going to call it like it is. I'm an umpire. I just call it like I see it. I don't take sides. I don't pick sides. I just, what's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. Point blank period. And so that's how you got to get this when you coming over here. 
And that's what I want y'all to understand because you know why I say this? is because our life on the line. Our whole life on the line. You know, everything. So that's what you got to realize. Hey, I done talked too long. I done went 10 minutes old. My wife told me. She said, man, you always talking about an hour. You finna get on there and be two hours, man. Uh, but we got to spend a little time together before this hell. Hey, make sure you click the link in the description for uh, mymentor.life. Go on there. Everybody need a coach. Make sure you book your session. This coach is on there for $25 an hour. Go on there, book your session. I'm on there too, but, you know, my pay rate a little different. But I want y'all to make sure you get you a coach to help you get through 2020. If you work with one and they ain't all that good, okay, ah, uh, they didn't really know what they was doing. Okay, find another one. Find another one. Keep going till you get the coach that you will be able to talk to, talk about your dreams, write out your goals, and, and do all of that, you know. Somebody say she's going to book Shannon. Yep, Shannon, who in the Blessed Tribe, is on my mentor.life. If you are a coach, consultant, or mentor, you can join my mentor.life. You just need a good headshot. That's my only thing I ask you. Have a good headshot. Do not take no picture, no selfie in your front seat of your car and think somebody's finna pay you their hard earned money. You could just stand you stand you in front of your wall, okay? And Put your camera on portrait mode and have somebody take a picture of you and use that as your headshot on my mentor. The website is mymentor.life, not dot com, dot life. That's a new dot. Mymentor.life. Kiana, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your time and gift. I pray that more of us ladies are not only able to receive these messages, but also apply them. Thank you so much, Kiana. God bless you. I know you're doing good in your life. Oh, yeah, I don't know where you finance that, but that's a, that's a show enough blessing that you just sent my way. God bless you. What's it supposed to say? Get y'all profile picture together now. Hey, y'all, thank you so much. And thank you to all the new members who joined the Blessed Tribe. Um... You know, I, I like I would love to celebrate milestones and stuff like that, but I'm still scarred, you know, about where I come from. And where I come from, people just ain't happy for you. People ain't happy for your success. So I come on here and I see Caucasians on here and they could they could tell you how much they YouTube make and and everybody in the comments, oh congrats, congrats. But if you come from somewhere like where I'm come from, you can't tell people, you know, what you make and Celebrate your milestones because people don't be happy for you. So I just, you know, I thank y'all for the support. Joining me in the Blessed Tribe, keeping the channel going because a lot of the stuff I say is too real. It's too real for YouTube. So what that happens is they'll strike the video. They'll strike it. They'll demonetize it. So with y'all being in the Blessed Tribe, that helps me a lot time to show up every day and post my video every day and in the midst of everything else i'm doing because of y'all support so i thank you so much and everybody who sent me a dollar the, the, the lady sent me 50 all the cash out i appreciate it i appreciate it i'm finna go and upgrade this phone to the iphone 11 you hear me i'm gonna keep this thing rolling share post a link right here to bonfire she made a shirt point blank period yard and y'all can support um share share she 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 be there for me anybody she she always share always listen just like two bella and carmel kisses listen to my heart and understand that i'm not here to do damage i'm not here to cause issues or to push a, an agenda that is negative and harmful to the world so if i slip up and i say something then share and and, and my supporters in the blessed tribe they understand where it's coming from and understand it may be a slip of the tongue. It may be I forgot to mention something. And they don't try to find a little hole and, and try to attack me and blow it up into something. Like a, like a lot of, you know, Satan means come on here trying to do. Um, Charmel, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay, they let you do a sticker. Okay, you did a sticker. Okay, God bless you for that. I, I really appreciate that. So um, that link that um, Cher posted for the t-shirt. If you got the extra fundage, y'all can support that. 
because I, I, I don't think I'm going to make the t-shirts. I got some up that show up under my videos, but I'm not really in the apparel business. So I'm not really good at all that stuff. And, and me personally, I just don't expect nobody to, to wear a t-shirt with something on it that I said. So that's why I did not make them and I probably never will. But I thank Cher for doing that for those of y'all who like to just have you another shirt to sleep in or whatever. Hey, but God bless y'all. Uh, somebody said they... Oh, I'm 15 minutes late. I don't know if y'all, but I got to get going. I, I'm going to see if I can catch the end of my fight or if it's already over. God bless you. Thank you to everybody that gave a gift tonight and joined the Blessed Tribe. We'll talk soon. Lord willing, I'll be back on Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. And for my videos, typically I'm going to have a video up every day by 4 p.m. Eastern. It was by noon, but been getting busy. In, in, the, in the morning coaching and doing writing, ghost writing. So by 4 p.m. Eastern, every day, I typically have a book up. If I'm not going to have, not a book, a video. If I'm not going to have a video up, I try to post in the community, on the community page that it's not going to be there. But if you into self-development, you can add me to your self-development routine because I'm going to try to be consistent and make it a part of my job and business to post every day tomorrow tomorrow or tamara thank you so much she said she got a quote from xander insurance i think that link in the description too i partner with xander so if you don't have life insurance the quote is free do me that one favor tonight do me that favor tonight it's it's secure it ain't no all that they've been around for decades dave ramsey always stamping them that's how I heard about them. I got my life insurance through Xander. You, the quote is free. It sends you all the different quotes and the prices. And it's very inexpensive. So get a quote from Xander Insurance. The link is in the description. Please do that for me tonight. Do that for me. I did. I partnered with them because so many people got to do go, GoFundMes when somebody pass away. So that's why I took. And I wanted to partner with them on that. Hey, Kimberly, God bless you. I got to go. Look, now I got to go now. Y'all keep blessing me now. I got to go. God bless you. We'll, we'll, hey, I, I'll have a video up tomorrow. We'll talk.